Hello. I hope that you and your family are well and managing in these difficult times. You will see that I'm sporting a lockdown beard. The jury is out as to whether this is an improvement and I guess time will tell. Nevertheless, I'm often asked as to how and why I got involved in satellites and spacecraft. Well, I'm a child of the Apollo era. I watched Neil Armstrong coming down the ladder onto the surface of the moon and I watched 2001, that epic space movie. Both of those fired my imagination for space. At the same time, I was a radio amateur. I designed and built transmitters and receivers and aerials and talked to people around the world at a time before the internet made it so easy. So when I went to university, a group of my friends and colleagues got together in a radio society and set up a small satellite tracking station to monitor some of the early radio amateur satellites in low Earth orbit. We then became more ambitious and started to track some of the American and Soviet weather satellites, decoding their data and displaying images from space at a time when this was not commonplace. The next step seemed sort of logically, if I couldn't be an astronaut and I wanted to get involved in space, perhaps I could build a spacecraft and put it into space. So by going around and scrounging, begging, borrowing, not stealing quite, but almost many facilities and equipment and components and getting advice from many people, including AMSAT, we started to design and build our first small satellite, USAT-1. It took us about two and a half years, and when we completed it and tested it, we took it to the US where NASA provided a free launch on a Delta rocket in 1981. The mission was a great success. Although it had its problems, we were learning a lot by, uh, about flying satellites. It's the first time we'd ever done that, of course, so we had no computers. All the orbital dynamics had to be done in our head, and we had no computers to generate and analyse the data. But nevertheless, during that time, we retrieved a great deal of information from the satellite, and perhaps above all, we proved that commercial off-the-shelf components could be used reliably in space on a small satellite that could be built with a tiny team in a university research lab and launched as a piggyback on a larger rocket. Perhaps this, this was, in fact, USAT-1 was th perhaps the first modern microsatellite and it sort of laid the foundation stone for what has become the new space industry. USAT-1 operated in orbit for eight years. It was in a low Earth orbit, 550 kilometres, sun synchronous. However, that meant that the orbit gradually decayed and after eight years it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, we monitored it falling through the atmosphere, getting hotter and hotter until it burnt up in the Indian Ocean, across the Indian Ocean. So USAT-1 generated a great deal of interest amongst radio amateurs and school children and colleges around the world who could track the satellite using very simple handheld equipment. And this of course stimulated our interest in what to do next and plans started for USAT 2. I've been asked what is my most satisfying mission? Well it's a really difficult question to answer because every satellite has had its own flavour, its own trials, tribulations, successes and uh, benefits and so it's a it's a difficult choice to make i think probably i if i had to choose one it's possibly usat 2 it was the most challenging mission that we undertook because we had to go from being told that we had a launch in just 6 months time to redesign a satellite from scratch build it test it get it to the launch site integrate it and launch it all within that period of time and we were working actually something like 18 hour days in order to do it including weekends and no holidays and so forth so with a small team that was physically and psychologically a really demanding mission but we did it we were still building the last bits of the satellite actually at the launch site but we didn't dare tell the uh, launch authorities the satellite still continues to operate uh, today. It transmits in orbit. Unfortunately, the telemetry has been garbled by the radiation environment that it experiences, but it still transmits on a 10-day cycle and is, is tracked by hundreds of radio amateurs and other enthusiasts around the world who use it as a beacon. So that's still, you know, what some nearly 30 plus years after being launched. So in a sense, that's been our most satisfying mission. But of course, all the others, the getting the first images from space, getting high quality uh, Earth observation data, uh, all, each of those missions is, has a special place. So it's very difficult to choose one, but I think if I had to choose one, it would be USAT too. 
If I had to choose my second favourite mission, I think it would have to be USAT-12. It was our first mini satellite. It was the first satellite to have three axis control, onboard propulsion and a high resolution imager and also to be able to take uh, high quality multispectral uh, data. So it was a, a real stepping stone from our 50 kilo box shaped microsatellites into something that's substantially bigger. And it paved the way for the work that we were going to do eventually on Galileo. It provided a lot of the technology that we used in our future constellations. And it, it demonstrated to the world that actually we could build at Surrey a satellite which was not just a 50 kilo cube. And that mission really did change the perception of SSTL. It also in, it was a leapfrog in our capabilities and then set us on the path to many of our future missions and of course the constellations that we've subsequently built for Earth observation. There was another element of USAT-12 which made it special and that was it was the first launch on the Dnieper launcher, the converted SS-18 uh, intercontinental missile. That was an exciting time. Bought the missile for a million dollars. They changed the software to keep going up instead of coming back down again with the warhead uh, to deploy us into orbit. And it was a first, not just for us as the first mini satellite, but also for the first commercial launch of the, uh, what was then to become the Dnieper launch vehicle, which we used on subsequent uh, missions very successfully. So all in all, that's another mission that has a special place in my, in my heart.